Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you uh, for taking time out of your day to join us today for our webinar. Uh, today's webinar, we're going to cover uh, Dicentis Wireless. Uh, for those of you that joined us um, for the conferencing overview, um, what we're going to do is kind of cover that a little bit, um, those few slides a little bit on the front end, but then we're going to really uh, dive into what, what the product has to offer and configuration of that. Um, I'm Preston Stevenson, uh, Product Marketing Manager for North America. Um, I've been with Bosch um, since 2013, uh, really focusing on public address and conferencing solutions uh, from that standpoint. Uh, also that will be going through this with us is A.J. Peterson. Uh, A.J. Peterson, he's been with us since uh, 2011, um, really covering training on the training portfolio. Um, so whether it's Electro Voice, RTS, uh, paging, mass notification, conferencing, wide variety of knowledge there. Um, and he's also one of our application engineers for both uh, public address and conferencing. As we go through this presentation, um, feel free to enter uh, questions you might have into the chat window, and we'll make sure we get those um, those questions answered as we move through the presentation. So without any further ado, I will hand it over to AJ. Thanks, Preston, and welcome, everyone. Thanks again for joining us. Uh, as Preston mentioned, I, if you were on one of our previous ones where we did the conferencing overview, we kind of touched on everything. So I am going to briefly hit some kind of overview slides, but I did want to spend the majority of the presentation going through the actual web GUI and seeing kind of what it would be like if you had one of these systems, how you set it up, how it operates, and what that experience is like. So I, I am going to go a little bit quicker through the beginning slides because a lot of you may have seen them, but if not, you can certainly check them out again. And again, focusing on the deeper dive of the web browser. So. <clears throat> Maximum flexibility, zero interference. And that's really our marketing pitch with this because uh, it's obviously true. Um, this is one of the most flexible systems we can have, not only in the physical locations of how you can deploy it, how fast you can deploy it, how fast you can combine it with other systems, uh, but just its versatility throughout. And again, really with integrating not only as a standalone, but with other uh, third-party equipment. So Wi-Fi, uh, the reason it's zero interference is we use every, all 44 channels of the spectrum if needed. We're constantly scanning and dynamically changing the system to the most open Wi-Fi channel. So you're never going to hear any dropouts. And, um, you know, we, we don't have an Infocom this year, but we always love demoing this on the trade show floor and just hearing it with 100 other Wi-Fi net networks on the floor. This absolutely has no problem. And, of course, a very... Um, government grade 128 bit um, encryption as well. We have to encrypt it for sensitive material. And what's happening there, why, why this is kind of dropout free, if you will, is our packet error concealment. So it's automatically predicting, looking ahead and seeing if any kind of packet has been lost or is corrupt or damaged. And then what it's doing, I always like to say, if packet one comes in, packet two is dropped and packet three comes in, we predict that and draw a line between packet one and three. And to the human ear, you're not gonna hear that. So we kind of call it a lossless system. Ease of use, our standard, um, you know, it's standard that you can support up to six cameras with a video switcher. All configuration is via the web browser that we're gonna really deep dive into today. With that web browser, we can of course hook up a wireless tablet so I can be wired to it or have it wireless. I could have it on a network. I don't need to have it on a network. It really gives you options there, depending on what you want to do. And then, of course, we have a redundant WAP feature or option if for those extremely high-profile meetings, if that is an absolute must, if some kind of WAP were to fail. And I always like to say we, we have yet to see one just, you know, die for no reason. More likely what would happen is someone unplugs a cable or kicks a cable or damages a cable and it'll auto fail over to that backup lab to keep your meeting going and obviously have no breaks core components of the system are going to be the WAP, the wireless access point that is our our controller that is our audio io that is what we log into of the web browser and that's what's controlling all the devices two discussion devices the standard discussion device which is just your audio conferencing device 
and then an extended device. That gives you that touch screen, that four and a half inch touch screen, which is excellent when we're doing things like participant identification or voting, that I can have a touch screen and vote and see what the vote is and see the voting results. Core accessories are our three microphones. The HD mic is actually highly directive is what it stands for. It's really like a line array for those of you uh, that are loudspeaker people. It's kind of like a line array in reverse, you're right? We're taking an extremely wide uh, horizontal pattern and a much more narrow vertical pattern. And that's specifically designed when we use a unit in dual use mode. So I can have one unit set up for two participants and that pattern of that microphone is going to pick up both of us very, very well. And then, of course, our 12-inch gooseneck and 18-inch gooseneck um, that you'll see in all of our conferencing products and our battery. I, I don't want to spend too much time on it, but we really love to brag about this battery. Um, you know, Bosch obviously is in the power tool business, and we took technology from our power tools division, incorporated it in our battery, and, and I challenge anyone to find a competitor that's beating our battery as far as time of use, how fast it charges, and the durability of that battery. Really, really did well with that. Of course, we have smart chargers for those batteries. So when you charge them, I don't have to worry. I can put them in there and just leave it. The charger knows if it's full. It knows if it needs to be conditioned. It knows if it needs to do a cycle. It takes care of that battery. And of course, rugged road cases. It's a highly mobile system. I mean, this is, you're all familiar with the durability of a Pelican case. I mean, that's what kind of level we're on here. Uh, Preston and I have shipped these all over the world's world uh, hundreds of times and, and they, they hold up very well to road use. Some additional licensing, if you are gonna use this system, licenses to unlock features. System licenses would be camera control. So I would buy one camera control license if I planned on using it. And this is, so our system is controlling that camera. It's telling it uh, where to go and who is speaking. For the seat licenses, meaning I need one of these licenses per seat and they're extremely affordable. And we did that so we didn't want to bulk license it where if, if you're a person that buys 10 units, you shouldn't have to pay the same as someone who might have 110 units. So by doing it per seat and making it very affordable, it gives you a much more competitive price point based on the size of your system. And those licenses are gonna be dual use per seat, voting per seat, and identification. So if I want to use the third one, our NFC cards, I can assign those cards to individuals who could sit, for example, wherever they want, log in, it'll say, welcome Preston Stevenson. And then when Preston votes, it knows Preston is voting a certain way, for example. Applications, I like to say we're seeing it in everything. A few I point out is very current in our current uh, you know, situation with social distancing. We are actually seeing a spike in sales for applications where we need to socially distance people in larger rooms, but give everyone a voice and um, an, the ability to speak while maintaining their distance. So this works excellent for that. In extreme cases, we've actually seen people since we have hot swappable microphones, we've seen people assign individuals microphones. So you bring your own microphone. We've even seen individuals assign an entire unit. So this is your device and you're the only one who will be using this, touching this, you know, and you can of course clean it. But just saying in our current environment, we're seeing how, how we have to change to feed, uh, meet the needs and applications of our customers. And this is an excellent solution. The other one I point out is historic buildings always. I have this beautiful historic building and we are not gonna be pulling cable through it. We are not gonna be drilling holes in any kind of desks and things like that. This is an excellent solution for that. <clears throat> so just to recap, this is kind of the portion I'm gonna cruise through here. This one here is, you know, it's obviously encrypted. We can have 120 devices on a WAP. If we use those in dual mode, we could have 240 seats. Straightforward configuration and synoptic control via a web browser and of course wireless control. We can control up to six cameras with a video switcher. Longest battery life in the market. I definitely want you to remember that. And that we're constantly scanning all channels of the spectrum and have that packet prediction algorithm. So we are not gonna hear, even if a packet's lost, you are not gonna hear that loss audibly. 
so the other thing, and, and this is kind of, if you've seen any of the other ones we've done, you know, the Bosch conferencing family is CCS 1000, Dicentis Wireless, and Dicentis Wired. These three slides are the camera protocols that we support for all three of those products. And those would be Onvis cameras by Lumens and Bosch, and then there's a few models specifically. Sony, protocol being Sony CGI commands, and then several models that are supported. And Panasonic CGI commands and several models that are supported. Keep in mind, this doesn't mean you have to use these. This means if I want the Bosch system to intelligently control these cameras and auto uh, identify them, it will be these supported models. We have seen other people use other um, cameras and there's nothing wrong with that. We've seen people use voice follow cameras and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that our system would not be intelligently controlling those cameras. So you would have an audio feed and a separate video feed that you would um, encode and then send out to a, you know, a WebEx meeting, for example. Switchers, if you have multiple cameras, the Kramer MV6 is probably the most popular. It does, does up to six cameras for all of our products. The TV1 Corio Matrix can do unlimited. I mean, this would be overkill for a Dicentis wireless system. Sometimes people would use it in a Dicentis wired system. Um, so even if you use this, it would still be a six camera limitation for Dicentis wireless. <clears throat> And then TV1 sells a few models in eight camera and a four camera. Again, keep in mind that the six camera limitation is the limitation for Dicentis Wireless. So we see a lot of people using that four camera switcher. Just give several options. And again, that is our system intelligently controlling these switchers. You could use other ones, but the control of them would have to be done separate. So just a quick recap. And again, this is the full pro portfolio that CCS 1000 and Dicentis Wireless are six up to six camera systems. Dicentis Wired supports as many as your video switcher can handle. The protocols we're looking for to control are Onvif, Sony CGI, and Panasonic CGI. And the switchers we're supporting are Kramer MV6, the TV1 Corio Matrix, and then the two other TV1 video switchers in a four and eight channel. So I'll pause quickly for questions there. Uh, and, and again, that was the portion I just wanted to get through kind of quickly so we can spend the majority of our time on the web browser itself. So if there's any questions, please uh, type them in the chat. AJ, we do have one question that's come in so far. Um, with your licensing of your system, is this applied at the factory or can I purchase these licenses uh, later uh, in life of the system? Perfect, great question. Uh, you can, it, we do not license it at the factory and you can purchase them up front or at any time. That is why that De Decentis extended device is so popular. So even if you're gonna start with just audio conferencing, but you might do voting and you might do identification down the road, you can purchase those or add on to those at any time. Good question. Perfect, and that's our only question so far, so we'll go ahead and continue on. Perfect, thank you. Okay, so I, being that this is a deep dive, I wanted to kind of show if you bought one of these systems, kind of exactly what would happen out of the box. So if I unbox and plug in my Dicentis wireless conference system, I am going to connect to the WAPS Wi-Fi. That's what's so great. I can certainly run a piece of Cat5 to it. I could have it on a switch and hardwire it, that's fine. But being that everything is wireless and that's kind of our whole pitch with the system, I can simply connect to its own Wi-Fi and log into the WAP and this will be the first screen I see where I select what language I would like. We're gonna obviously uh, for North America probably use English. It is then gonna ask what country I'm in and what time zone date time I am in just so it knows where it is in the world. And that is important to point out if you select different countries and the Wi-Fi channels are different, this is going to know that. So, so you certainly want to have your country right because it will know what Wi-Fi channels you use locally. Then it's going to ask you if you want to add a new user. We default user has to be the administrator. Administrator has full access. I just added a new user as myself and you can see what I want you to see is on the right. The grayed out boxes are what I'm 
allowing this user to have access to. So once I set up my admin accounts, I could have several users who only, are only capable of maybe managing a meeting. So it's kind of like they couldn't log in and, and unprogram or maybe unsubscribe or have any access to the real programming of the system. They can simply use the system. So it's good to point that, that out. And oh, we're right there. Yep, so that's what that, sorry. I add a user and then you'll see I have the two users, administrator and myself. This is where I could add another one or delete users if, I don't know, say someone left your company, you could delete their user profile. And last, it's just asking what you'd like to name it. It needs a unique SSID. It, you can change the WAP key, uh, meaning the password that you log in and the host name. So if you had multiple rooms, I might name this, you know, whatever, this, the whatever ballroom one, ballroom two, ballroom three, for example, or have unique um, WAP passwords. Then after this point, I would hit set up device. It'll go into a reboot screen. I like to point this out because the system reboots itself and then won't automatically log you in. Because keep in mind, when it reboots, it has repowered itself and then you would disconnect from the Wi-Fi. I get that call a lot where I set it up and then I couldn't connect. And I say, yep, just reconnect to the system's Wi-Fi. Because it's just like turning off your router and you haven't set up your computer to automatically connect to it. Um, so then you re-log in after I've set up my user. I'm going to log in as admin so I can show you all of the features. And this is our home screen. I really like what we've done. Not only that, I think this is extremely intuitive and self-explanatory, but it's very similar across our entire portfolio, which is nice. If you're an integrator installing a lot of these systems, this is very easy to learn. And if you're an end user who might not be super technical, I think I always tell people, plug it in and push all the buttons. You are not going to break anything. So you can sit and navigate through this menu, and it really is self-explanatory of what each thing does. So let's look at the first one, manage discussion. So if I click the manage discussion button, it's going to take me to this screen. This screen is basically saying, right now, no one is talking. And if you'd like to add someone, speakers meaning add them to the floor or add someone to a waiting list, I can do that. Or if someone wants to be removed from the waiting list or removed from the speaking list, you can do that. A lot of people have an operator or a clerk or a chairman who could have their iPad set up and doing this exact thing. Someone leaves their microphone on and leaves the room or leaves their microphone on and they're having a side conversation. I can very quickly on the fly turn their microphone off. So if I added a speaker, this is what that screen would look like. In, in my demo here, I've got five of our coworkers uh, and their names, so I could add them. Say I wanted five, and this is all up to you. I'll show you that in the prepare discussion screen. Um, so in this example, I want these five individuals to have a discussion, so I would highlight them and add them. And then it would show that they are active speakers, and then I could remove one or several or all of them uh, if I didn't want them to speak. And if I did that, it would say, are you sure you want to remove everyone? Yes, I do. So that's just kind of what that basic manage discussion screen looks like. How that manage discussion screen looks and how it acts is completely up to you based off the prepare discussion parameters that you assign. I love about all the products, you can do this on the fly. So if something was set up are needed to be changed. You set it up one way and I need it. Oh, oh my gosh, I, I'm the operator and I'm realizing this isn't set up right. I can very quickly change this on the fly and it wouldn't interrupt any kind of meeting in, in session. So the prepare discussion screen looks like this. I know there's maybe a lot there and it's kind of small, kind of walk through it. Discussion modes, same across the board for all of our products. Open, override, voice, push to talk. Open's most popular, that's just saying, in this example, the next thing down, I want two microphones active at one time. So if two people go live, first come, first in, first out type of deal, the third microphone would go into that waiting list. And in this example, my waiting list could have up to 20 people. And then if one of those two microphones muted in open mode with auto shift clicked, the next person automatically goes live. So to me, it, what I see in North America is this 
being used more than anything. It keeps an extremely natural flow to a meeting. And then you just to control how many speakers can be at once so it doesn't get chaotic. I've also seen, uh, I did a county clerk um, where they wanted no open microphones. It was 100% request to speak. So if you wanted to speak, you would request and then the chairman would allow you to speak and put a timer on you. So you get to speak, sir or ma'am, you have five minutes. I mean, we see that in a lot of government sessions and things like that. Uh, kind of down the middle there, just the waiting options. Again, how many people you want in that queue and, and how you want them to operate. And then at the bottom is priority options, where if I want, if I am a chairman and I want to override, do I want to hear the tone bing? And do I want to, you know, temporarily mute them while I override and then allow them to speak? Or I can, when I mute them, it turns their microphones off and they have to re-request to speak. Completely up to you. We want to give you a lot of options. So you say, you know, we want to use it this way. And I can say, we can do that. Um, the other modes override. Basically, not used in North America very often, but used in other countries and regions. So, you know, Bosch is a global company. We always take that into consideration. That would be, say, two people are speaking and a third person hits their microphone. It overrides the first person automatically. So, just another way to conduct a meeting thinking globally. Voice is voice activated mode. That, of course, sets a gate on the microphones. And when my voice uh, exceeds that, threshold, it would open up my microphone, and we can have an open discussion. Um, I love it. It's popular, but we always kind of say, keep in mind, voice activated mode with 10 microphones works phenomenally. Voice activated mode with 120 microphones can get messy. If a, if a 30 people start talking, you know, that's a lot. That, that's a lot for anything. So, just keeping in mind, the other thing is, say I'm in voice activated mode, and I start having a a side conversation with someone at a you know audible level, it might open that microphone up. So it works great, just right tool for the job. You know, use it with the right application. And then push to talk is just momentary. So if I want to speak, I press and hold my microphone. That way if I walk away, it automatically mutes me. And in open mode, I toggle on, toggle off. So a lot of things to play with there just based on uh, what you want to do. Preston, is there a question? You look like you want to chime in. <laughs> there is one question that popped in and actually a good question in this in this part kind of you're going through um, as you transition from the users to the discussion. Um, if I am logged in and I need an, an admin or somebody else to be able to, to make changes, can multiple people be connected at the same time? Yes, based on how many, so you can create multiple admins or, or multiple users, and then if you gave them, I, I mean, you could certainly have several admin making changes on simultaneously, but I'd be careful with it. You know, usually you'd kind of say, you're the admin, and then I might have one or two operators with not as many rights just to keep the meeting flowing, but to answer your question, yes. Perfect, thank you. Thanks, great question. I encourage the questions. So going back to that main screen, um, voting, we click on voting and we go to this screen. It is ad hoc voting, meaning I just type it right up on the fly. I, I always do this just because I live next to Smith Park and there's a bike trail in there. But I always say, should we extend the bike trail in Smith Park? I have several ways to parliamentary vote, you know, yes, no, for, against, abstain, for, against, abstain, did not participate. There's several options of standard parliamentary voting and then how I want to display the results. So I just did a for, ab, for against abstain and then voted on some units and this would display that four people were present, four people voted, two people are for, one against, one abstain. So we would uh, take those results and then um, there is an API. You can access and control all of this information with an API. Uh, so if you wanted to do something else with those results, store those results, display those results, or control the system in its entirety with a Crestron panel, AMX panel, Extron panel, you certainly can. Any feature you're seeing in this web GUI is open for API control. And we do see a lot of that. 
a lot of systems uh, will do that. So participants, back to my home screen, and then I go to participants. This is where I can create participants and turn each device, each extended device has an NFC card reader built in, which I love. So in the far right, you see that I turned the reader to AJ Peterson's device. I then scan an F NFC card on my reader and it goes to that NFC code in the upper left by the assign button. I then click on a person and hit assign and that will assign that card to that person. So one discussion device could assign all of the cards very quickly. And in case someone lost the card or someone who, who knows a card got damaged, I could very quickly as an operator Boom, give them a new card in that meeting. And then if I'm doing voting, or I just want an open floor plan where I can sit anywhere, you can see on identification at the top, I can turn it off. I can have a hard assignment and a hard assignment at seat or at any seat. So if it's at assigned seat and I scan the wrong seat, it will say, you know, you are at the wrong seat. This seat is for Preston, for example. And at any seat, if it said, you know, normally Preston sits here or he sat here last and I scanned in, it would say, welcome AJ Peterson, this is now your seat. Again, completely up to you, but very quickly capable to do this. So if I go back to the home screen, these get pretty self-explanatory. If you hit the power button, it simply says, are you sure you wanna turn this on or off or put it in standby? I think we can all handle that. Battery and signal. I love this, another thing we always show, I think we do an excellent job of showing you exactly at all times in several places what is happening with your battery life. So I can see um, how much battery life I have left in these three individual devices. I can see how many charges, how many full cycles it's charged. That's really important for battery health. Um, our official statement is that after 1,000 charges, that battery loses 10% of its capability. Keeping in mind, on an extended device with the touchscreen, I have a 24-hour battery life. So after 1,000 charges, I lose 2.4 hours of its full capacity. So I'm at 21.6 hours battery life. And then after another thousand charges, I lose 10%. You can see these batteries last for years and we're really proud of the quality of battery we put on there. Uh, next, obviously, I can see my signal. How, how good of a signal am I getting? Um, the serial number is more really just for us to troubleshoot. And then the test, that start range test. That's just gonna say, if I'm setting up and, and I move something or I think something might be out of distance, I can just do a quick range test and the system will say, you know, you're good, everything's there. My next screen is also in the battery and signal screen, but I wanna show kind of what happens here. I think we've done really well with this too. So seat two in this scenario, its battery life is under one hour. So not only in the battery and signal page do I get a very vivid warning that you might wanna change that battery, if I go to any page, if you look on the bottom, you see that exclamation point, and it's hard to read, but what that says is, one of the devices has a low battery. Click here for more info. So if I am on any page in this web GUI, and I click, I see that, and I click on more info, it automatically takes me to this page, and I can see exactly what device is running out of battery. I can hot swap that device. There would be a brief down moment, or I could just swap it with a, maybe a spare device that I keep on hand. Also keep in mind the device itself has two indicators of a low battery. It has an amber and red light on the back of it. So if I was an operator, I can visually look out and see if a device started blinking at me. And then on the battery itself, it has a button to see how much charge is left. So really, you're kind of getting four indications of battery life at any given time. So it's just good to know, right? Because we obviously need the battery for the system to work. Back out to the home screen, logging. Uh, end user, you're probably not gonna use this. This is really for us. If, if we're troubleshooting, if, if something goes really bizarre, we might ask you to export this and email it to us so we can look on the real kind of 
nuts and bolts of what's going on behind the scenes. The only thing you're going to do as an integrator, I always say I commission this system and the customer's happy. I would clear the log so you can start fresh post customer satisfaction of a commission system. And then the logs would only be what they've done and not what you may have done when you're commissioning and plugging things in and you know things like that. So just to start with a clean slate. Just some information also really for us, um, you, you can see what your IP address is, if you're using a static IP, what's your host name, your SSD, what country you're in. You know, we might ask you what your firmware is, things like that, but um, just kind of us for a troubleshooting um, page. Uh, log out, it logs you out of the web browser. That's, that's about it. So basically, if I was logged in as myself and I wanted to move to another computer, I would want to log out and then maybe access the, the GUI from another computer and log back in. All right, and I skipped system settings on purpose because there is a few more tabs there. So if I click on system settings, it takes me to this page, and then I have several more tabs to set up. Like we set up users when we initially started it up, you might just say, I'm going to do this later. I don't know who the users are. Or maybe I'm an integrator and I just want to set it up as admin and let the customer set up their users. Because again, you don't know who the users are or what access you want them to have. So I can access that user page and add delete users and what access they have to the system and their password. Audio. We do give you an audio input and output um, on the WAP. We get a mix of the master volume and the in and out for gain. Um, of course, for routing options, we've got floor, mix minus, insertion. Uh, we always kind of say, so this, this audio input is an analog audio input. It's a tip ring sleeve quarter inch connector. We see a lot of people taking this and either injecting it into a wired system or maybe an infrared wireless IR system or a telephone conference, video conference, you name it. The other thing we see, and I, I really like, and it makes the system very powerful, is we do an insertion mode or just a floor mode, and we inject this into a DSP, like a Dante DSP. And now if I have multiple rooms or mo multiple devices that maybe are non-Bosch or some other device that's accepting Dante, now I can cross patch these, right? And it starts to become a system that has room combining or I'm interfacing this with third party equipment because once you have it in Dante, as Dante people know, I can do a lot with it. So we see that used quite often and, and that works and we get really kind of into the more complex system. On the right, we have feedback suppression. I'm really proud of how this turned out. The feedback suppression is on the device. So it is really intelligently monitoring itself at all times. Uh, we have, you can turn it off, you can turn on natural, and you can turn it on maximum. I'd say almost always it's on natural. It sounds phenomenal. It does a great job, and it really can replace, I can't count, I would say, <laughs> how many conference rooms you walk in, and it's got hardwired installed microphones in the desk and ceiling speakers in the top, and then it goes to some third-party DSP feedback suppressor that makes everything sound atrocious and they're still fighting with, with feedback. That is what we'll replace. You can get rid of all of that. You can get rid of all the installation. You can get rid of all the service calls of your DSP, and this we've just done it for you. We have an EQ. We have a compressor on the microphones. We have feedback suppression. It's there. At auto gain as well on the microphones, and it just does it for you. So the bottom right is test tone, and that is simply for troubleshooting. If I just wanted to turn on a test tone, so I just could test the loudspeakers or the volume, or I could do a frequency sweep. If I wanted to get real fancy, I could do a frequency sweep and hook up some kind of, um, you know, uh, sound designer software if you really wanted to, and then EQ out certain frequencies to tune the room. That's why we did that. And that's kind of why the next thing I'm going to. So if I had some kind of sound designer software and I did a sweep of the room and the system, maybe it goes out to a PA as well because you can put it out to the headphones and the line output. And I did a sweep and I found some really troublesome frequencies in that room. Yes, we do have all that auto uh, algorithm running, but we wanna give you the freedom 
the tune your system. So I could go in and I just did a couple peaks here in a low shelf just to show that, you know, some for a nice picture. But I could go in and pull some frequencies or boost some frequencies if I needed. So you've got a, a high and low high and low shelf and three PEQs with of course gain, frequency, and Q and a bypass. Next is licensing. Here, all this is going to show is just that obviously our tech support systems have demo licenses. Uh, if you bought licenses, it would show what you have here. And then this is where you add them or process them. You're licensing to WAP, and that's just where you do that. So if, if you needed to know kind of what you had or you forgot or you wanted to add something, this is where you do. Network and general settings. Again, this is just an information page of what IP address, what your name is. The one thing I would do here, it's hard to see because there's a lot of info there. I can factory default the system. I could change its IP address, but this is also where I set up redundant WAPs. If I wanted to do redundant WAPs, this is where I would say, this is the primary WAP, and then I would go into the secondary one um, and subscribe it to the primary one as a backup. So for seats, this is where I assign the licenses to the seats. Out of the box, the seat names are going to be seat one, two, three, four, five, and so on. And if I have participant identification, I can keep these seats generic. And then when I log in, it'll say who I was. Let's say I don't want to do that and I don't have licensing for that. And all I'm going to do is audio discussion, but we sit in the same spot. I could change that seat name to a person's name, and that way you could kind of assign them a physical device. Completely up to you, just want to give you options. You'll see if I'm a chairman, I can check that I have priority. Multiple people can be chairman. If I want to have a dual unit, so I have Chris and Ryan on a dual unit, so they'd be sharing one device. And then if they have identification and voting, if they're going to vote and log into the system, you, I should point out here, and you can notice, if I use a seat as a dual unit, I need to have enough identification and or voting licenses because that unit, that device is now two seats, so it would require two licenses. Something to keep in mind, but if you did go with this and talk to your sales rep or us, we would definitely make sure that you knew that. And then if I had a camera set up in this system, uh, that's where I would say, you know, if if Preston is speaking, it's going to be camera one, preposition three. So when he talks, camera one goes right to his uh, headshot or his mugshot, if you will. And then we could stream that out to a video conference. Date and time, as you can imagine, is the date and time. I also kind of left this up while I was doing these screenshots. You'll see here, for example, you at the bottom of my screen. So I'm looking at the date and time. But it is giving me a warning saying, you have a device with a low battery. So if I clicked on that, it would take me right back to that screen and say, AJ Peterson's device has less than an hour. You probably want to address that, just to show you an example. Upgrade firmware is exactly that. Uh, out of the box, we're going to have pretty much the most up-to-date firmware. So you don't have to worry about it too much. What is important here, if you have an extended device with the touch screen, and you want to load a company logo, you load it just like you would firmware. So I can go and load my PNG file or my image, uh, and I would push it to the devices. And then you see in the bottom right, there's a logo and a check mark there. If I have that check mark on, my discussion device would display your company logo. And, and it might seem small, but it's a nice touch. It, it really is. It, it just kind of adds that level of pleasing aesthetics when you have this device uh, in your office. And carrier management, I always like to point this out as well. As we had said, we utilize all of the available Wi-Fi channels, all 44 of them at this moment. And if that changes, if there's different, if you're in a different country, we'll adapt to that with a firmware upgrade. If for whatever reason there's, I, I would just make up something, you know, we have 8G or, what, or whatever it is, 10G or 12G, <laughs> microwaves come out. We can update it and update the system to achieve that. But what's important to point out here is, yes, we auto scan all of the channels and we go through them at all times. But let's just say you run into a system, IT, the IT department contacts you and says, for whatever reason, 
you know, 5G channel 56, 60, and 64, we have reserved for equipment ABC. We just want you absolutely staying off it at all costs. You could uncheck those. Another thing we've seen is if you have two systems that are isolated systems, but right next to each other, sometimes they'll split up the channels between system one and system B. But again, you don't really have to because we will auto look at those and know that another channel is being used. Just giving you access. We want to give you and your IT department access to these parameters for more advanced scenarios. And with that, that is the end of my deep dive into Dicentis Wireless. I tried to keep it right at about 45 minutes so we can open up for any Q&A and questions. And I know Preston will let you know if you want any more info um, and there's some, some deals Preston will talk about and, and we're open to you contacting us personally for anything you may need requiring this or any Bosch or Bosch conferencing products. Thank you. Perfect, thanks AJ. Um, got a few questions here. Um, first one, how many mics can be active or live at one time? 25. Yeah, that can be set up to 25, that's correct. What are the differences um, between manage meeting and prepare meeting rights? Okay, so it, you don't need a license for that. That is included with just a regular system. Managing the meeting is turning the microphones on and off or allowing people to speak or taking them in the waiting list or out of the waiting list or from the waiting list to a live microphone. And prepare meeting is setting up the parameters of how you would manage the meeting. So in prepare meeting, I'm gonna, discuss, I'm gonna decide what microphone mode I'm in, how many microphones, like the prior question, how many microphones can be open at one time? I could put three, I could put 20. That the prepare meeting is the parameters of the meeting discussion. Perfect. Um, one question that came in, um, where can you find information about security encryption um, in the Dicentis Wi-Fi system? That answer. Um, under the, the product page um, on the Bosch website, we do have a white paper uh, that covers the security encryption piece. Um, so you can, you can drill into that one. Um, with that, um, we will go ahead and uh, close it up. And if you have any questions, uh, just reach out to us, uh, any of your Bosch representatives. And thanks uh, for spending a little time with us today.